Owning She Podcast. Sheena V, the personality that will outlast and surpass any podcast. No competition, her standard is excellence. Lifestyle, first class. Unity, love, and truth, her divine intention. So pull up a seat, rest your feet. Sheena knows it's not complicated, just simply unique. Sheena knows. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is yours truly, Sheena LV, and welcome back to another episode of Owning She, where we delve into those unpleasant yet necessary discussions. I have a serious question. So is the term ride or die a for real, legit term that people should be using or embracing? I mean, you guys let me know what you think. I've always heard the term and even thought, like, you know, when you're young, you even think like, oh man, I want to be somebody's ride or die. Like, this is going to be the thing that sets me apart. You know how it goes when you're young and impressionable. And especially as a young teen, you know, and you smelling yourself and you're all boy crazy. Every girl has that phase. But then as I got older, I started to realize that was the dumbest thing I could have ever given energy to. Why would I want to do that? Why would anyone want to do that, right? And I think uh, for many, this mind frame is more so geared towards women versus men. You know, you don't see too many men wanting to be a ride or die unless it's, you know, they homies or something like that. They, you know, which is weird, but that's a whole nother show. But why do women think they have to do the absolute most to keep a man's interest? So you mean to tell me you would absolutely do anything this man asked all for the sake of love, regardless of if it if it means danger to you, your children, your family, your livelihood. I mean, do you understand how silly that sounds? So when we're talking about ride or die, we have to put in perspective. This ain't mean this. This doesn't mean stand by your man. A lot of people have ride or die and standing by your man confused. Okay, you can stand by an individual, but once certain lines are crossed, you need to back off and reevaluate, right? It's unhealthy to think that you need to give this much energy to any individual. You know, and I think this stems from women being placed in a lesser category. So we go through life thinking that we have to do extra just to be in the game, just to have enough to even be included or called off the bench, right? And when I was younger and was in a so-called ride or die relationship, situationship, I gave so much more than I was getting back. Not knowing I was teaching this person, you know, how to treat me. I was teaching him that no matter how it affects me mentally or even emotionally, I would be there for him, right? I won't go into details about it and it's a thing for so many and I can't even put an age bracket on it because I think it, it it has to depend on the individual to realize that this is an unhealthy title or behavior we should be practicing. You know, I hear too many women once a situation has gone bad and they say, well, I did everything for that man. I built that man. I've given up my life so that he can live out his dreams. I did this and I did that. I put my career on hold. I did so and so, so and so. But you should not be doing that for anybody. And if any man tells you he needs that from you, you should reevaluate the situation you're in. You should be able to be in a healthy, thriving relationship where there's an understanding without putting yourself on the back burner to please somebody else. It just doesn't make sense. I don't care what they they tell you. You know how these men come up with all these dreams of, well, baby, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. I just need you to hold me down. Ah, uh -uh. I'm not your mama. I'm not doing it. And I think that a lot of women need to adopt that mind frame. Like, look, I'm not your mom. You know what I'm saying? We both grown. If I got to get it together, so do you. And I think that so many women long for that love and protection that we tend to lose sight and forget to even protect ourselves in the midst of it. You know, a relationship is a partnership. You should be able to join together and still do all of the things you want to do for yourself, build yourself, have a separate life without having to sacrifice for another grown individual. That just doesn't make any sense. If you find yourself sacrificing, make sure the sacrifices are equal, more so compromises, okay? And have d discussions to see where the other person's head is at. And that the plan you are constructing is for the best benefit of the relationship as well as you all as individuals. 
We got too many women out here waiting on real life criminals to come home, jailbirds. The man gets home and he gets a whole nother relationship. And, and the women out here still doing every the most for a guy that you didn't wait 10 years for or, and because you think you're somebody's ride or die. You know, I'ma just hold down him. Okay, yeah, maybe he don't wanna be with me, but what she got on me, I'm, a, I'm still around, whatever. I mean, you're, you're lessening your value at that point. You know, you're depreciating yourself and value at this point. If this is your mind frame that no matter what this man does, you're gonna be there for him regardless. I don't care if you're the child's, if he's the child's father and feel like he will always come to you be just because you're his the child's uh, mother and father. That just doesn't make any sense, uh, ladies. Come on now. And then you have where he will, he will do, he'll come back to you, right? But that's because you're allowing him to use you up when he wants to. So you really don't have any control over the situation like you think you do just because you're his baby mama or, you know, you're the silly person who's going to keep doing whatever it is that he asks of you and you think that that's a display of love. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, you really don't have control over the situation. You are just a mattress and an asylum for when he has none, you know? So think about that. Uh, but we don't stop to think at how men truly function, you know? And if you are even dating a man or giving nonsense energy to a boy in a man's body, the, we have to evaluate where we get these notions from in our mind. Like, well, I can change the person. I can do this and that for the person. Um, he just has to be willing to change or she has to be willing to change. But you cannot change someone who doesn't want to change. This is a personal journey for an individual that they have to change within themselves. So it's not your job to be captain, save whoever, and think I'm gonna get with this guy. He's he's a little off balance, but I'm gonna change it or I'm gonna love him through his problems. You know, if he can't love himself through his problems, you can't either. See, this is the thing. You have to know to love yourself through situations. You have to know to love yourself through traumas and different things that has occurred in your life in order for you to even become a sane person within yourself to even think you can start caring for another individual, but yet we get into these relationships and situationships and we turn out uh, disappointed because we think somehow, some way we can change people into what we want them to be. And you can't, it's not your job. I mean, why would you pick up all of that drama onto yourself to change another person to, to what do you think is gonna happen? You're gonna mold this person into what you want them to be and it's gonna be okay for, for from then on? No, it doesn't doesn't work like that. And if a man loves you, no man is going to want you to risk your happiness. He's not going to want you to lose your femininity by doing the most for him. He's not going to want you to lose your self-respect just to be with him. Boys do that. No man is going to seek to control you. You know, we're not, we're not out here looking for animal trainers, ladies. We're looking for a partner, right? You need a man that's going to be a partner and you guys work together and build together. If the man you are with doesn't have it in him to maintain a healthy relationship with respect by being the leader, then you're on, that's not someone you need to be with. You know, if you put a man in, in a situation to where he's going to lead the family, you have to make sure he's wrapped tight enough to do that. Not your own fixing, but he has to understand that he has to come into the situation ready to handle it. Yes, we're not all perfect and we're going to fall in some situations, but we're not talking about falling in ways that we already know not to do. A lot of people do things that they already know not to do. And because you're constantly hell bent on this ride or die, that that it's just going to take time. I'm just going to stick by him. He'll be okay. No. Why would you put yourself in that situation? I mean, come on. So according to the Urban Dictionary, a ride or die is an individual who is willing to do anything for someone significant in their life. This is someone who will stand by in any of life's circumstances. You know, and this term is a noun. It's used to describe um, a committed individual, you know, to a person or a situation. So how far does a ride or die go? You know, is the term to be taken literally or is it simply something used to describe a close connection? As someone who is fully aware of the true crime community, and true crime cases, I have come to understand that people oftentimes take ride or die to a high degree. Like take Bonnie and Clyde, for example, a high profile, well-known murderous couple, for example. 
these two rode until they could ride no more, right? They were willing to do what it took to stand by one another. Even though this is an extreme example of a ride or die, it is necessary to understand how this term can apply and sometimes does apply to today's relationships and to what extent it should be taken. How does this term apply to today's relationships? Today, it seems like a person who considers themselves a, a ride or die, they believe that they should stick beside an individual through anything. But this could even mean, like I said, emotional, physical, psychological abuse, cheating, rejection, disrespect, unhappiness, uh, negative compromising, right? And even worse, worse things can come out of these situations. You know, they can get physical and violent. Some people tend to lower their standards to maintain something they are simply used to and even cut corners to keep their significant other around. And so when it comes to strictly friendship, some people will ride or die just because they have rode for such a long time and not knowing they should have jumped off that bus a long time ago. Some will even maintain the relationship based off of what society or others say and they will sacrifice peace to make sure others remain comfortable. All of these things and more can take place when the term ride or die is taken in a literal sense, okay? So what does this term even mean figuratively? Like, could it possibly mean moral support, providing uh, means when necessary, not allowing your loved ones to suffer, maybe even being available when someone is suffering. This is the way I believe most people utilize the term. Whether it is taken literally or figuratively, we should consider the best ways to be a ride or die. One idea is to set healthy boundaries. If this is the person you're going to hang out with and be with, you know, you have to set healthy boundaries. Like I said a little bit ago, you have to know where the compromise slash sacrifice begins and ends. You know, if it's no longer healthy for you, then we need not <laughs> be doing that, right? And how can you possibly ride if you are drained from constantly giving yourself to others? You will indeed die without healthy boundaries. Other ideas are to take mental health breaks, you know, or trips. Be available as much as possible. Understand that you are the best possible person you can be to positively impact the lives of those around you. You know, so if you're in a situation where you are feeling manipulated in any way, you're probably being manipulated. If you're feeling like you're getting the lesser end of the stick, you probably are. You're giving and not receiving, covering for the terrible behavior, thinking you can fix them or they will one day change and it doesn't work like that. And you are dying solo instead of riding together, okay? So love yourself through whatever it is you're going through and there will be light at the end of the tunnel. For coaching, email admin at sheenalv.com with the words coach me in the subject line. Let us know how we can get you back on track. Follow me at IG on sheenalv underscore. And that's our show for tonight. Until next time. You've just listened to another episode of Owning She with Sheena LV. Check your favorite podcast platforms for our past episodes and be sure to subscribe for new ones. Want to be a guest on the show? Visit www.sheenalv.com forward slash contact. And remember to always own she.